today we are going to introduce to you all of the rattlesnakes that we have. We're going to share some fun facts about them and feed them. We're gonna start here in the zoo where we have two species of rattlesnakes, a, a timber rattlesnake and a western diamondback rattlesnake, which I think we're gonna start with. No, we're starting with her. Yeah, yeah, we'll give, we'll, we'll see if she wants to eat today anyway. This is Sophia. She is, again, a western diamondback rattlesnake, a very common species of rattlesnake. And we stumbled upon her through kind of a rescue situation. She was owned by somebody who had a bunch of snakes, was evicted from his house, and he had two rattlesnakes that he brought with him to a hotel that he was going to live in, which isn't a good idea. I wouldn't recommend doing that. And that lasted all of about three months before he was caught living in a hotel with rattlesnakes and some other snakes too. So he gave them to a rescue who was more of a dog cat rescue. So they reached out to us. We met them in Minnesota and picked up Sophia, this diamondback rattlesnake, as well as another rattlesnake, which we will show you later on in this video. But Sophia is a wonderful girl. She's beautiful. She's really light colored for a Western diamondback, I think. Some people have told us she might be a hypo or something, but she's just a diamondback to us. So yep. she's been a great addition to our zoo. Now, Western diamondbacks are a pretty heavy bodied species of rattlesnake. They live in, the, they grow to like four to six feet long, so a decent size. And this species is found in the southwestern portion of the United States compared to the eastern diamondback rattlesnake, which is brighter in color or has more contrast, it gets bigger, and it lives, of course, in the southeastern portion of the U.S. The diamondback rattlesnakes, both western and eastern, can be distinguished from other species of rattlesnakes by the presence of black and white bands right before their rattle. And this is similar to what the Mojave rattlesnakes have too, but it helps distinguish them from many other species. And finally, just like all the other species we're going to be covering today, the western diamondback rattlesnake is a species or a type of pit viper, meaning it has a pit, a heat sensing pit located behind each nostril. And these pits are what allow them to see the infrared view of their surroundings. So you could blindfold a Western Diamondback rattlesnake, which I wouldn't recommend doing, but if you did, they would still be able to see just fine using the heat signature around them. These are the same heat sensing pits that pythons have on their upper and sometimes lower lips. So with all that being said, now that we know a bit about Sophia and about Western Diamondbacks, we're going to see if she wants to eat for us. She is pretty uh, active right now. She is. And it's nighttime here at the zoo, yeah. so she should be hungry. Sophia, do you want this tasty rat? Oh, there we go. I think she does want it. Maybe. We'll see. I'm going to drag it, I'll put it over here so we can watch her eat. Kind of create a bit of a scent trail with the rat, which we'll explain a bit more later. Next, we have Justin Timbersnake, our timber rattlesnake. He is probably one of my favorite snakes in our zoo, not gonna lie. And the timber rattlesnake stays a little bit on the smaller side compared to the diamondbacks. These only grow to about two to four feet long. They also have a beautiful dorsal stripe running down their body, and dorsal basically means on their back. So they have a dorsal stripe or a stripe along their back in varying shades of brown. I might be biased, but I think the dorsal stripes of the timber rattlesnakes up here in Minnesota are the prettiest of them all and Justin here is also a very pretty individual even though he's not from Minnesota originally. I mean timber rattlesnakes seem to be the ones that change the most throughout the region. There's from a one lot of variation yeah they can be distinguished from other rattlesnakes though from the with the presence of chevrons down or, their or side. Or V's in common lexicon. Yeah or sideways V's yeah. running down their side. Timber rattlesnakes are native to the eastern half of the United States including right here in Minnesota actually but in the southern part of their range they are called cane breaks. Now some yep. people might think it's a different species altogether but cane breaks and timber rattlesnakes are the exact same species. Timber rattlesnakes used to also 
also be found up in Canada, but they have been extirpated from there, which basically means, extirpated means because of human development and humans in general, they have been made extinct in a previous range, so they no longer live in Canada. To hunt, timber rattlesnakes along with all rattlesnakes will strike their prey, inject venom in a split second, but actually immediately let go and let their prey run away. That's because the prey will quickly succumb to the venom and die shortly afterwards, and then the snake simply has to follow the scent trail from the prey item and then eat its meal. So in captivity, a lot of keepers will feed their tim or feed their rattlesnakes by letting them strike the food and then just leaving it there. But what Ed and I like to do instead is let them strike their prey and then actually drag the mouse or rat around a little bit to create that scent trail. And that kind of creates a bit of mental stimulation for them. And it would be what they'd encounter in the wild anyway. So that's what we're I mean, gonna do we here. we saw it just in, with Sophia down there. Yeah, she, she followed your exact scent trail. She followed the trail right above the rock. It was great. So they do actually follow those trails in captivity and I like to think it gives them a little bit of enrichment. Justin also really perks up as soon as he hears the lock undo. He knows so, what the lock sound yeah, means. Yeah, he pretty much figured it out. <laughs> I love this guy. We're gonna use a really long hook by the way, just to be safe. Oh, here you go. You want food? Oh my God, you pulled it from the tongs, dude. He's like, of course I did, that's my food. The mouse is running away and it's gonna die right there. Now, Justin, on the other hand, he sometimes doesn't follow the scent trail we give him. No, he just goes straight to the mouse. Yeah, yeah I think he just looks and goes, there it is, I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> right. Now, Justin's story isn't as exciting of one as uh, to Sophia's. Justin, we just found online from somebody who needed to rehome him, and he was, I mean, he was smaller when we got him. I wouldn't say he was- he's skinnier. He was skinnier. I wasn't, wouldn't say he was unhealthily no. skinny, but he's definitely beefed up in our care. And he was his... an old retired uh, program animal. Oh, that's right, he was. Yep. So that's probably why he's so used to living in the zoo and so cool with people watching him all day. But he has been an amazing snake. I really do enjoy him. Oh, and now he's going in the yep. wrong direction. Now he's not going. You know how I just said that he goes straight for his meal? Uh, now he's going to prove us wrong and go in the wrong direction. Yeah. He's like, yeah, it's in here somewhere. I'll just do laps until I find it. All right, now that we have gone over and fed the two species of rattlesnakes we have in the zoo, we are gonna go to our house and feed the remaining rattlesnakes we have. And now we're at our house where we have two more species and three more rattlesnakes total to show you to actually round out this video. So first we're gonna start with another one you have met before. This is room service our Southern Pacific rattlesnake. This one has the same story as Sophia, the Western Diamondback, came from the same person, same situation and everything. So um, this is another hotel room find. Now the Southern Pacific rattlesnake is kind of a smaller species. It only grows to around two to four feet long. And these, as the name implies, are native to the very southernmost coast of the United States, hence the Southern Pacific rattlesnake. This one in particular, room service, hasn't really grown for us at all. So I don't know if there's something genetically off with this one or what, but it's just a really small individual. It seems like this is gonna be his top max, max size. Um, but just, I guess, one more fun fact for you before we feed him. A rattlesnake's rattle is made up of keratin, which is the same protein as our fingernails. And they're able to shake their rattle 60 times per second, which is insane. Every time a rattlesnake sheds, they actually grow or gain a new segment on the end of their rattle, or actually on the base of their rattle. It grows outward. So as babies, they are born, since they're live bearers, um, they're born with just a single little button, and then as they grow, the button kind of moves outward as more segments are added underneath it. However, snakes shed at different rates, even rattlesnakes, and sometimes those rattles will break off in the wild, so you can't tell a rattlesnake's age by counting the segments. So with all that said, let's feed room service. I have a little rat pup for you. Oh, good job. You struck it right away. Here. <clears throat> Enjoy. All right, 
He saw some of it, and then he decided to tuck it in the back dark corner. So apparently he doesn't want us watching the rest of that. So on to the last species. And last but not least, we have our last species of rattlesnake for this video. And this is a species you haven't seen on our channel before. We'd like to introduce to you our new baby Western Massasaugas. There's one cutie right here, and there's another under the leaf behind him who you will see shortly. Now, all rattlesnakes, fun fact, if you didn't know this already, they are live bearers. They are ovoviviparous. So they produce eggs like thin shelled or like more of a membrane really around the uh, uh, embryo, and that's where it develops, and then the baby hatches immediately upon being born, essentially. So these have an interesting story. They were born in our care. We were given a rehomed uh, adult Western Massasauga, and we had it in our old house, and we weren't sure if it was a male or a female or anything, but we moved it here with the enclosure, and the one you just saw, room service was moved here too. We decided before we bring them into this new house, we wanted to really clean their enclosures and just start everything fresh. So we left them in the garage for like two days in their enclosures because it was August, so they were fine. And cleaning day came. We cleaned the Southern Pacific rattlesnake's enclosure, moved him into the house, perfect. And then we moved on to the Western Massasauga's enclosure and we saw teeny tiny versions of the one we had in there starting to slither around. She was giving birth in our garage. So we left her, turns out it was a female, left her overnight in our garage, and she gave birth to three beautiful babies, one stillborn, and unfortunately she passed away afterwards. So she was kind of a rehab situation. She had a big, the mom had a big wound by her cloaca, and we were waiting for it to heal before we moved her into our zoo, but she, that wound must have been just too much on top of giving birth. So we don't have her anymore, but we kept two of her three babies, gifted or gave one to somebody else who was looking for one, and we still had these two cuties. So that's how we acquired them. They were born in our garage. We need names for them still. And they actually, as of today, the bigger one, which is I think the one that's hiding actually, is officially able to rattle his tail. They haven't been able to rattle yet because they only had that one button at the base of their tail. But let's see if you can hear the rattle. The one in front is the littler one. He's one shed away, I think, from gaining enough segments to rattle. But this one's a little bit bigger. And as of his most recent shed, he can rattle and it's the cutest little thing. Hi, buddy. Can you rattle your tail? I know you can do it. You did it this morning. Show the world that you can rattle. Can you show them your rattle? First, let's see it. Don't strike at the cork. Oh, he's rattling! <laughs> it's the cutest little rattle sound ever. Oh my gosh. You can like barely see this little rattle on the end of his tail. Actually, it looks like he has some stuck shed on that. He's gonna have to get that off on his own. He just shed too, so it might, that still might be coming off. But yeah, as of today, he can rattle and it is so cute. All right, let's give them some meals. Here's the smaller one, here you go. Do you want a fuzzy? They've also, as of today, upgraded to fuzzies instead of pinkies. Oh, good job, you struck. Okay, there you go, you can eat that one. Oh, he's rattling again. <laughs> Sounds like a fly. It does, actually. And like a bee. It's like the lightest rattle in the world. Okay, buddy. Do you want a fuzzy too? I know you want it. Oh, try it again. You missed it. No? Good enough? Okay. We'll say you got it. All right, let's watch these babies eat. Well, one of them ate. The other yeah. one just looked at the fuzzy yeah, the I entire did. time he ate. He liked it, just yeah. took it forever. He just stared. Yeah, he might eat it later. I mean, this I is... mean he does follow you too. Like You're like over here. Oh, he's buzzing at you. I'm back over here, come here. Come back over here, come eat your fuzzy. Eat your dinner, yep. come here. <laughs> it's an airplane. Sorry, our camera battery died, so now we have to 
re or finish this video on our phone because we don't have a backup battery nope. we just found out so sorry for the audio change but uh, something i forgot to mention earlier was that this is the smallest species of rattlesnake we have shown you today the massasagas only grow to about 18 to maybe 24 inches long they are a very small species of rattlesnake especially when they're babies they're teeny tiny and adorable as you can see they're just so stinking cute and they're also a debatably native species to minnesota just just like the timber rattlesnake is, which is why we were pursuing one of these for our zoo. Now I say debatably because people actually debate if they were a native species or not. They're not found in Minnesota at all anymore, that's to say the least. But back until 1989, there was actually a bounty on rattlesnakes here in Minnesota. That basically meant that you could kill a rattlesnake, turn in its rattle, and get paid by the government because they wanted to eradicate all rattlesnakes. Almost all of the rattles that were submitted for the bounty were timber rattlesnake rattles, but one of them submitted, from what I understand, near the Wisconsin border, but still it was submitted in Minnesota, was a Massasauga rattle. But that's the only one that had been claimed as found and killed in Minnesota because the rattle was um, submitted. But a lot of people speculate that the Massasauga was actually found and killed in Wisconsin and then submitted to Minnesota for that bounty. So it is debatable on this if this is a species that is native to the state or not not. But regardless, they have been extirpated, just like the timber rattlesnake and most of its range up here, and you can no longer find any massasaugas in the state of Minnesota. So kind of a fun little tidbit about them. Now with all of these venomous species we have shown you today, they are really cool, really fascinating animals, but don't get a pet rattlesnake just because you think it's cool. We don't have them because we think they're cool. Some of them, like the Southern Pacific and the Diamondback, were kind of thrown at us in a rescue type situation. And we honestly don't know of anybody else we would trust, I guess, to keep them safely, because every time a reptile keeper gets bit by a rattlesnake, it looks terrible on the community, and it just encourages more strict laws to keeping all snakes in general. So we have those two just because they were kind of a rescue, unexpected rescue, and we have the timber rattlesnake and these massasaugas solely because we want to teach people about our native species so that fewer of them will get killed in the wild. I mean, the massasaugas look very close to hognose snakes, like eastern hognose snakes in Wisconsin, where these are actually found. So we want to teach people the differences, and we also want to teach people about the timber rattlesnakes that live in Minnesota. Because the more you know about something, the less scary it is. So we wouldn't have them if it weren't for an educational purpose, honestly. I do really like them, I will admit that but we wouldn't have them if it weren't for the zoo, to be completely transparent. So don't get a pet rattlesnake just because you think it's cool. If you are gonna get it, have a reason that's gonna hopefully help wild populations in the wild and get the proper training to handle it safely. So sorry, I'll get off my soapbox, but I don't want this video of showing rattlesnakes eat. Encourage anybody to get a venomous species because they're definitely not for many people. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video regardless. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know which species in this video, the Western Diamondback, the Timber Rattlesnake, the Southern Pacific Rattlesnake, or the Western Massasauga was your favorite in the comments below. And thank you Patreon backers as always. We'll see you next time. Really? You're not even done yet. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. What was that? Get it out of me. That's a good shot. Yeah, it is. Like how he's like wiggling. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Ew, it's stuck in my teeth. <laughs> what a weirdo. <laughs> Dude, just swallow it more. Yeah. Get it down. You're not done. No, it's still, the tail is right there. Oh, it's the tail. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, it's still there. Ew, get it out. Oh my God. No, it, it's a, that whole tail is connected to the rat buddy. Yeah, you can't get it out.